There's two ways that you can have laws. One is written and one is in the heart. If you have written laws, <clears throat> and every nation does, then you have to enforce those written laws by bullet with bullets, basically with some kind of discipline. Bullets, bayonets, you have to enforce laws written with a threat. On the other hand, when the law is written on a person's heart, when they want to do what is right, when they open up the Word of God and they understand that this is what the Bible teaches, and so therefore that's what they're going to do, then you don't need the bullets, you don't need the bayonets, you have the Bible because the law is written on their heart. What were the first century Christians doing that we should do? They were sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ where each one of those people that would receive Christ had a change of the heart and therefore would live in the right way. We in America, listen, we, we can talk about the ballot box all we want to. We've been trying to do this since 1980, and I used to be pretty much involved in this stuff back in the 80s before I came here. It does, it's not working for us, is it? Is it working? Is it really? I mean, we elect a certain president, and he, he just appoints any kind of judge in the world, promises and promises and promises and promises, and with the exception of maybe one guy, it wasn't getting done. I'm not saying we shouldn't vote. We should vote. We should vote scripturally. But there's something that goes beyond that. And that is the sharing of the gospel of Christ. It's we make ourselves vulnerable. We make it, we make it sacrificial. So what it's just it's just so embarrassing to share the gospel. I just don't know if I can embarrass my you know, there's a problem there. There's a problem with loving people because when we love people, we're not going to tell them something that's not true. You see, you think to yourself, well, if I'm just tolerant, then everybody knows I love them, make them feel good, and it does make them feel good. But you're not doing them a favor. Why, why would you think that you're doing someone a favor by telling them something that simply was not true? Only to see it catch up with them later, maybe in eternity. When you think about it, when we do that, the person we're loving is ourselves because we want to be looked at as tolerant. We want to be looked at as loving. We want to be looked at as Christian. We want to be looked at as a, a good person. We, want, we don't want the conflict. We don't want the argument. But we're not doing ourselves any favor, nobody any favors, by not telling them the truth. These people were telling them the truth. Listen to Psalm 125. Those who sow in tears shall reap with joyful shouting. He who goes to and fro weeping, carrying the bag of seed, the word of God, shall indeed come again with a shout of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. John 20, Jesus said, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, so send I you. We need the courage to preach the gospel. You say, well, yeah, it, it just takes too long. It just takes too long, Pastor. I mean, We'll never get things changed around, turned around. Let me share something with you. Think about it for just a moment. I remember when all the gay liberation movement kind of came into focus, and it was probably about 45 years ago. A couple of guys got together, and a few, few people at least, and they had a strategy, much like, uh, you know, the Third Reich had, really, and other people have used, abortionists have used the same thing, and that is, you know, you get the media on your side, you teach it in schools, and then you, 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 you treat everybody as an enemy that doesn't agree with you. Those are kind of things that they were, they were doing. And here's the thing. It took them 45 years to get to this point. 45 years. Just think about it. If you and I as a church would have the courage to share just simply what Jesus Christ has done for us with anybody willing to listen, what would happen to America 45 years from now? Man, that's a long time, yeah. But how, how old is this nation going to be 45 years from now if we don't share the gospel? What's going to happen 45 years from now? You know, I don't know. We just keep going down, 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 and down, and, and we just we, we cannot enforce laws with bullets and bayonets when the laws are not even closely, remotely recognized in the Bible. It's just the opposite. How are we going to do that? We're, we're, we're eventually going to have to have politicians that have convictions of the Word of God. How are we going to do that? We're going to raise them in our homes with the Word of God.